Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, please welcome Dan Stoddard. So next bout, brought to us by Total Therapy. It's more title action. This time it's the Amateur Middleweight Championship and representing Stoke Power Team and right, fighting out of the blue corner, we have Dan Stoddard. So I've seen Dan fight before, he's a, a, a powerhouse, he really is. He's a tough guy, stocky build. He's managed to drive himself to a 7-2-0 record. He's the kind of fighter that, uh, you know, even if you, even if you might beat him in the fight, you're going to get out knowing you were in a fight. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, again, you know, the, 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 the thing about the thing about this fight that really I find interesting is is you know you've got a wrestler you know in Stoddard you know he used it really well. I know he appeared not long ago, Rage in the Cage, and he used his wrestling to great effect in that fight. So uh, you know, and, and and look at the build on the guy. You know that upper body. That's there. There's a wrestler's build there. Yeah, I mean, I, as I say, he's short, stocky, powerful. You know, um, is he going to be in one of those situations as a middleweight where it, he's probably always going to be giving away a little bit of height and a little bit of range? But I, I think you know, he's it, got a good, powerful physique for the for the sport. Very thick in the you know thick torso, and it means that he's going to have a lot of core strength. I'd imagine. Yeah. Another one that looks like he's just waiting for the bus. Yeah. <laughs> it's that mindset that I don't understand. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, please welcome Steve Henshaw. Stay coming out of, again, FCPC, the Full Contact Performance Center. This guy's coming in with a 4-1 record, but he's coming in as already a champion. Again, Rage in the Cage, he won their title. He's looking to add another title belt to that collection. You know, and, and again, this is a guy that holds this organization in high regards. He says the FCC title is the best amateur title to have in the country. So to hold that puts you at the top of the division. You know, that and the fact that this is a second piece of hardware for him, I think he's going to be pumped for this. Yeah, and as I mentioned before, that uh, what you get with Stoddard is he's probably always going to be giving away a little bit of height, a little bit of range. Perfect example here. Hensall is, is, is quite a tall fighter. He's still powerful, but he's certainly got the advantage in, in range here. You know, and, and Henshaw, you know, in a, he's only been to decision once, finished all around, you know, this is, this is a guy that's not used to letting the judges decide how it's going to go in over five rounds. Uh, I'm predicting there's going to be a finish in this one. Very long fighter, and tall, lengthy. And so, ladies and gentlemen, your next match of the evening to be fought over five three-minute rounds, and it's for the vacant FCC Amateur Middleweight Championship. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, he enters the cage with a mixed martial arts record of seven victories and two defeats, representing Stoke. Here we go, vacant middleweight championship on the line. The red shorts of Stoddard and the blue shorts of Henshaw. Neil Hall cues the fighters, and away we go. So, again, I think I'm expecting Stoddard to try and get this to a, a clinch, use his power, but it's Henshaw that goes for the first takedown. Well defended, though, by Stoddard. 
couple of shots coming over the top. Oh, oh. beautiful up, of course. Looking to almost for a judo throw there, looking for the head throw, but there was Stoddard just wasn't having that. Yeah, he's, he's got to be hard to shift in that kind of throw, you know. His uh, centre of gravity is pretty low. He's got the power, he's got big legs as well. Foot stomps. Foot stomps. Ray's 1994. Always oh, good. Back to Marco Huas <laughs> there, fantastic. You know, this is a position I'm at, and I imagine Starter doesn't mind being in. You know, he's got that strong upper body. He's pushing against the cage, making Henshaw work. You know, they say that this is the most tiring thing you can do in MMA. This is good, good strategy, perhaps. Take a little bit of his energy away. I certainly, you, you want to get your opponent carrying your weight here. You want him to be pressed up against the cage, feel your head into his jaw. You know, all of those things that sort of tire your fighter out. Um, the, the dangerous bit of this is, you know, it, 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 it's close to falling into that kind of uh, wall and stall category. You've got to be really careful that, the, you know, you don't get the crowd on your side. And whilst you still might get the results, all of a sudden you're struggling to get a fan base. You know, and people have got to remember it's, it's a sport, but it's an entertainment sport. He's using head control really well. I think it's probably one of the more underestimated grappling things, how important it is to use that head. To, to, to keep driving forward, make your opponent work, and he's using it very well. Wrestling 101, get that head in the pocket, looking towards the center, make him feel that pressure on the on his jawline. It's really important stuff, and, and, and quite often, even when you've got fighters who profess to be good wrestlers, quite often you don't see that kind of skill. Nice little switch Went there. The hip toss almost. He's got the guillotine position as well. He could oh, that's finish a this. That's a, he's got that tight. He's got that's the tight finish, and there we go, first round. Just left the head in a bit too long. Wow. So Steve Henschel picks up that title after a, a, an impressive submission victory in the first round. You know, now he's got two titles to his belt. Two titles to his name. This is an impressive amateur to keep an eye on. And so, ladies and gentlemen, after two minutes, four seconds of the first round, go with a high guillotine. So ladies and gentlemen, here I am, I'm with you and you, middleweight champion Steve Henschel. Yes! Steve, that was a quick finish against the top opponent. Is that how you expected it to go? Well, to be honest, but I've been on control of you to gauge what the first round went to was there. So, that's part of the time we can weaken a little bit. Yeah, he's a strong, stocky opponent. Um, he started off pressing you against the cage. It's clearly, he's done some damage, you've got some blood in the mouth as well. You know, was that distracting you from your game? No, not at all. I was completely aware of it, what I was doing. I was just the feeling sort of breathing a bit heavier and heavier, and I was just waiting to find the turn. You certainly found the guillotine, and you chased it hard. You finished it early. That's your second belt now. So two champion, two times champion. Tell me, what's next for you? I'm not sure. I'll to defend the belt on the next show in March. Hopefully. Excellent. Anybody that you'd like to thank? There's always a good team behind you. I don't know who they are. There's two men down there. Down the support. Thank you. Excellent. Ladies and gentlemen, you 